Hey everybody, thanks for joining us for another edition of Pro Acoustics Tech Talk. I'm Nathan. I'm Colton. And we are back, back again here at our Salado, Texas location. Gonna talk to you guys a little bit more about volume controls, particularly 70 volt volume controls. Okay. Uh, we've done a little bit of 70 volt talk in one of our prior videos, but yep. we wanna dive in a little deeper, show you how it works, show you how to wire it up a little bit, and um, give you just a little bit more oversight on how this all works. All right, Nathan, volume controls. We have a good visual representation of what's about to happen going on behind us. We're going to show you how, uh, how to wire them. I get asked all the time how they get involved with the entire system. Um, how do we control one area and not you know, affect the other area, area's volume. So uh, let's, let's do the breakdown, uh, give it to me straight, and you know, uh, what, what's volume control's purpose and what do they do? You got it, you got it. So um, real quick, there are 8 ohm volume controls and then yeah. also 70 volt volume, volume controls. 8 ohm volume controls tend to be used in home audio applications. Uh, for more info on home audio versus commercial, check out one of our other videos. Yep. Uh, but we're talking all about 70 volt volume controls here. Uh, why does it matter? Uh, it matters because there is a transformer on the back of some of these volume controls, actually almost all of them, uh, yep. and the electrical um, voltage matters. It just matters. does. Yep. Uh, so I have in my hand here a Atlas Sound AT100D. Uh, it comes with uh, a white faceplate to go into a single gang um, uh, box on gotcha. your wall, just like mm -hmm. your light. Uh, they also make a stainless model. Uh, also have some volume controls from uh, Lowell Manufacturing, Qualm, a handful of other manufacturers make some of these 70 volt volume controls. Awesome. Uh, basically, most of the time they click with each adjustment. Normally get about either a dB or a 3 dB bump each time you click it. Okay. Uh, but the idea is you run from your amplifier, our amplifier here, yep. into the volume control, out of the volume control, to the speaker. So you can think of it just like a, uh, a dimmer knob for your lights uh, okay. to where, um, you know, you come from your breaker panel into your, uh, your dimmer knob, out of the dimmer knob to whatever lights you want to control. Right. Uh, and obviously, uh, in this kind of scenario where you might have multiple volume controls, when done correctly, uh, the dial will only adjust the speakers <laughs> that you want. Yeah. When done correctly, just like Colton's house, when he turns the dial on the wall in the kitchen, it yep. does not turn down the lights in the bedroom. Nope, that's not. We don't want that to work that way. We want to make sure that the dials are wired to the appropriate uh, speakers you want to control. Yep. Uh, so whether it's stainless, whether it's white, um, you, you've got to wire them correctly. Uh, whether they're in a rack, they also make uh, in-rack volume controls from some of these same manufacturers, so you can have all this done in a nice, neat little rack plate. Yep. Uh, or whether it's in wall, it's important to wire these correctly. Um, importantly, I'm going to go ahead and just let everybody know for visual purposes, the back of every volume control has a handful of uh, screw terminals on a Euro block. Uh, each of those is going to correspond to uh, whether it's an attenuated or an unattenuated signal. Those are big words I'll explain in a little bit. Right, it just means, yeah. Is it affecting the volume of the sound or is it not? Mm -hmm. uh, and then a positive and a negative. So uh, each of these volume controls uh, drawn for us by uh, our wonderful web team, yep. each of these has an amp in positive and negative and a speaker out positive and negative. Those are the labels on the back of these, this little bitty uh, Euroblock plug that I'm holding up here. Mm -hmm. um, for our intensive purposes here, Anytime I color to the top of the volume control, that's going to be the amp in, positive or negative. And then when it's coming out of the bottom, it's a speaker out, positive or negative. Very important to read what it says on the volume control when you're putting the wire in. Yep. Um, so from here, we have our makeshift restaurant or office or whatever it is where we have a mixer amplifier, hopefully a uh, Pure Resonance Audio yep. MA series mixer amplifier or any other manufacturer Absolutely. Uh, feeding uh, from the mixer amp into multiple volume controls to feed to the speakers. So right off the bat, you're probably asking, how do I wire this? Yeah. So you always do have the option in 70 volt audio to run multiple home runs. What's a home run? 
home run just talking about baseball yeah exactly exactly uh all about uh, albert pool holes <laughs> and uh you know the boys so uh no for home runs we're talking about running just one wire yeah. to either one speaker or to one volume yep. control if you want to you can run a wire from this volume control and when i say a wire i mean a a cable with cable. two wires yeah. inside, a yeah. positive and a negative. Yeah. You can run from there to there, you can run from there to there. You can do an individual home run for each of those volume controls if you want to. Yeah. Problem is, I did a doctor's office the other day that had 24 individual rooms. Yeah. That's 24 home runs. That's 24 positives and 24 negatives. That's not a good thing in audio. What am I going to do with 24 <laughs> cables? So at that point, if you're an electrician or somebody more electrician minded, you can take all 24 of your positives, tie all those together, all 24 of your negatives, tie those together yeah. using a proper uh, electrical standards of you know, safety because once again, audio is electricity. Yep. You can tie all those together. Uh, you can build a terminal block. You can do that kind of thing. Uh, but I would have advise against it. It's not the easiest. It's too many cables. It's too possible for there to be a, it, not a short, but maybe a stray wire that right. you know, falls out of a uh, wire nut or something like that. And it's just not generally not a real good practice. So it's okay if you need to do a couple of individual home runs, you know, maybe all the volume controls on the east side of the building and all yep. the volume controls on the west, west side of the building. That's a good way you to look do at that. it. And you can uh, do what I'm about to do here, basically times two. Uh, but the idea is instead of doing all those home runs, just yep. like when we were doing 70 volt speakers, uh, remember, we would run them in parallel, one after the other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So instead of paralleling our speakers here, because we want to get these volume controls in the mix, yep. we're actually going to parallel our volume controls. Okay. We're going to daisy chain volume controls one after the other. Gotcha. It's, in very, it's very, very important to always keep positive to positive, mm -hmm. negative mm -hmm. to negative mm -hmm. when you're doing this. Mm -hmm. So once again, like I mentioned before, the top portion of our volume control is going to represent the amp in side. That's yeah. unattenuated. That's just the cable coming in and then the cable, you know, in our case, coming out. Coming out, yeah. No adjustment made whatsoever. Gotcha. So to go to our first volume control, I'm going to come out of my positive terminal. Yep. And I'm going to go into the amp in on my first volume control. I'm going to go ahead, repeat that same thing Voila. with my negative. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I'm going to come out of the speaker outside which is the attenuated side, yeah. meaning it's making, it's adjusting the level. Yep. I come down the, there, into speaker. the positive, into the positive terminal on yep. the speaker. Positive, positive, negative, negative. And I'm gonna do the same thing with a negative. Yep. Okay, speaker one is done. Yep. That dial controls that speaker. Yep. But, you know, that, that can be, well, let's say that can be my patio, that can be my inside, yeah. that can be my outside, that can be room one at the doctor's office, that can be whatever I want. And yeah, just to be clear, if you had multiple speakers, you know, in that patio, it would just it would just bounce one after after the other. Perfect. Right? Yeah. Thanks yeah. for pointing that out, Colton. Yeah, yeah. If I wanted to do more speakers, I can easily come down here, do another one. You know, jump off the negative here. Yeah. Do another one. On down. All the way down. For all yeah. intensive purposes, forever. Yeah. <laughs> Most yeah. people don't, but you know. Right. Uh, that that is the idea there, but that gets us done with what I would call zone one. You know, it's the same input source coming from this amplifier, but it's a different volume. So we're going to go ahead and, and move this on from zone one to zone two. Rinse what do repeat. I do? Yep. The last thing you want to do is to come out of the speaker out outside yeah. over there. Because <laughs> at that point, this dial controls that dial, yep. which means that if you're in Colton's kitchen, you're turning down the lights in Colton's bathroom. Yeah. You, you don't want to do that. So instead, we're gonna pull off of the amp in side. Mm -hmm. So we're literally either gonna uh, you know, splice from this wire here, or we can actually come out of the same terminal uh, and then come from that uh, volume control to the amp in from the next volume control. We're gonna do the same thing with black. And again, positive, positive, negative, negative. Yeah, very important to make sure and pay attention uh, to your appropriate, uh, to your, your polarity, to your positive and to your negative. From there, we're gonna come out of that volume control on the speaker outside. This is gonna be on the attenuated side, the side that lowers or raises the volume. Yep. And we're gonna go into the positive terminal of the speaker. We're gonna do that again. I guess you guys probably get the hang of it at this point, but right. I'm gonna go ahead and draw the rest of it just for the folks at home. Yep. And then 
and do it again with your negative. And again, while he's doing that, it's very important, you know, if you have multiple speakers, you know, in, in the multiple zones, the same concept applies. Uh, whoa, <laughs> you're going to lose the board. The same concept applies, you know, if you have four speakers on that first volume control, the 10 on the second, you're just going, you know, off one speaker off the next. So, um, yeah, if this, if this looked like 10, this looked like 4, this looked like 15, and, you know, it just keeps going, you know, and positive, positive, negative, negative. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, you can, and you can definitely always uh, have zones with more speakers or with less speakers. So in our restaurant scenario, uh, this can be our main dining room. This might be a 100-watt volume control. It might yeah. be a 200-watt volume control. We might have 20 speakers on this one. Yeah. But say this is the kitchen where we've only got two speakers, and say this is the men's restroom, and this is, or the restrooms, and then this is private dining. Yeah. We don't have to have an equal number of speakers on each volume control. No. Uh, and then basically when wired in this direction correctly, uh, basically paralleling your volume controls one after the other, uh, always using the amp in the unattenuated side, we can do as many volume controls as we need in this same type of scenario. Um, it, it, and it, we can also mix and match ceiling speakers, wall mounted speakers, pendant speakers, subwoofers, anything like that as needed. Right. Uh, but this is a great way um, to create multiple volume zones inside of your 70 volt system. Very inexpensively as well. Most yep. of these volume controls, you know, in a 100 watt model, 100 watt model may run, you know, uh, anywhere from 25 to 50 dollars or so, uh, depending on if you want the decor look, you know, the white plate, the cream plate, pretty black plate. Uh, if you want stainless, it tends to be a little bit cheaper. Yep. And then we also have um, lower wattage volume controls. Yes. So just to kind of explain, each volume control has its own wattage rating. These are AT100s, uh, 100 watt attenuators yeah. from Atlas Sound. That means it's rated for up to 100 watts yeah. on the speaker output side. It doesn't matter if there's more wattage going to the amp input side, it's just based on the output side. Yeah. So these, the sum of these speakers is what matters about being, oh, wrong direction less than 100. Right. So you want to make sure yeah. that you don't exceed the wattage rating of the uh, volume control itself. Hopefully this makes sense to you guys. Uh, if it doesn't and you do have questions just based on what you see here, go ahead and shoot us a comment down below if you'd like. Yep. Uh, like, like the video, let us know you're watching. Feel yep. free to subscribe or you can always give us a call. Um, our 800 number is 888-256-4112. Uh, you can visit us online at www.proacousticsusa.com. We do have a number of packages with uh, pendant speakers, in wall, uh, on wall speakers, yeah. in ceiling speakers, with volume controls uh, available yeah. on our website, also on our Amazon store. If you feel you want to shop there, by all means. Uh, or if we can help uh, go over anything for you, put together a custom package, we can help to get you uh, the right number and type of speakers that you want with the yep. right volume controls and walk you through how it all goes together. Just uh, reach out to us and let us know how we can help. Uh, you can reach me at Nathan at ProAcoustics.com. I'm Colton at ProAcoustics.com. That's Colton with an I. And uh, don't be a stranger. Let us know yeah. what we can do to help out. Like us down below. Subscribe. Tell your friends. And uh, be sure to stick around for our next video. Absolutely. Until next time, I'm Colton. I'm Nathan. See ya.